If you've been following the channel, you know that we're putting this on this. Now, the most important thing when you're going to do force induction on anything is the fuel system, hands down. Cooler IATs or intake air temperatures is great, but really we need to make sure that we're delivering enough fuel so we don't create a lean condition and hurt the engine. One of the major problems when modifying these OBS trucks or old body style Chevys with the 5.0 and the 5.7 is they had a unique spider injection system that looks like this. This injection system makes it really hard to increase the size of the injectors. There are some other options out there that give you 42 pound injectors, which is adequate for what we're doing, but they are very expensive. For the method that I'm gonna use, we'll have a better option of choosing different fuel injectors for whatever we decide to do down the road. We're gonna go with a multi-port fuel injection system. And now this is multi-port. It does have an injector per cylinder, but it is underneath this intake manifold. So what we're doing today is we're gonna pull this intake manifold off and hopefully swap to the marine intake manifold that I've picked up off eBay. So we need to pull out this distributor and I've already loosened up the cap and I wanted to share this as I pull this out. One of the things I do when I pull a distributor out of these is I always mark which direction the rotor is pointing. Now you can see that Gene actually has had the distributor out of this before, probably when he did intake gaskets in it, has an R for the which where the rotor is pointing, and then it has a mark down here where he had the cam sensor plugged in. So he has the base of the distributor marked, and then he has the rotor marked. So what we're gonna have to do is make new marks for where it's pointing currently. I'm not looking forward to setting that new one in because it is a lot heavier than what this one is. And this one feels heavy as heck. Woo! Almost! Come on, one girl. All right. Got it. One down. Let's go grab the marine intake and see what we're dealing with. I'll tell you one thing, this one's about twice as heavy. Okay. Start with that, we'll kind of set the throttle body on here. And, well, that's gonna be a problem immediately. The throttle body is gonna hit the fuel rail. Wonder if we can get a spacer for that. Kind of raise it up. Need about a one inch spacer. We'll just take the fuel rails off for now. Looks like we might have a possible height difference. I don't know, this one's sitting flush and this one has some silicone on it still. If there is a height difference, it's minimal. In the marine intake manifold, the temperature sender is right here by the EGR pipe. On this one, you cannot run it in that same spot because the AC bracket is right here. So we're gonna have to come up with a solution for that. Obviously, no EGR valve, not a big deal. This piece right here, this might be a big deal between having that 5 8 nipple on this. I gotta figure out something to do. Obviously this has the EVAP. There's no EVAP mounts for this one. So EVAP stuff's different. This one doesn't have it, that's okay. This does not have that big injector plug. Remember the injectors are inside this intake manifold where here they're on the outside. This is a vacuum port, which I think we're gonna run our map sensor off this vacuum port because we need to find a solution for the brake booster hose. So overall, there's some things we gotta change. Just kinda keep comparing and I'll show you the solutions as we get to them. The first one we're gonna address is this brake booster hose. Obviously, on a boat, there's no brakes, we don't need a brake booster. On this intake manifold and this port is a MAP sensor. And if you're not going to be forced induction, you can still run this MAP sensor here and not have a problem. You can find a single bolt one and be a direct bolt over. And then you could drill this hole right here and tap it for your brake booster. I'm gonna to decide to go ahead and tap this hole here and run my map sensor remote off of this port. So this fitting is actually out of the bottom of an intake on an LT1. Go figure, an LT1. Surprise, surprise, had some laying around. It's a quarter inch pipe thread, which turns out to be about perfect size for this. And it's a five eighths nipple, which is exactly what we need. What I don't like is that it's gonna come straight up versus this comes out at 90 degree. I'm gonna go to the parts store and get a 90 degree and screw this into the side of it. That way we can do it in factory orientation. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is try to tackle this temp sender. So this one's gonna be a little more risky because we wanna drill a hole in this and get it kind of centered enough to drill, but also at the right angle. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use this drill bit guide. I drilled this, started off with a 3 8 went to a half inch, then went to a 9 16 tapped it. 
you watch me thread this, the actual hole is the right size just for the uh, quarter inch NPT tap. Then I use that LT1 barb on it, that's a 5 8. You could get by if you just did a uh, quarter inch to half inch barb, quarter inch NPT to half inch barb. That would work right here. I already had this stuff, we're gonna use it. I chased this from the marine intake with my 3 8 NPT tap and I installed a plug in it. So now, our next thing we gotta come up with is this coolant barb right here comes off of the factory intake that goes straight to the water pump. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right here. There's no EGR valve here, so we're gonna center punch this and put one right here, and we're gonna come off with a 45 degree barb. Woo! That was close. Got it. And I think we're okay, surprisingly. Now there's about a quarter inch of thickness here on the intake manifold. Not quite as much as I'd like, but it should be more than enough to hold what the pressure is of the coolant system. Now this swap used to be done a lot in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, and I'm not exactly sure how they could do it. I'll tell you what, the information for this stuff is very far and few between, and I've just done my best to try to to figure it out on my own. A lot of times when this swap was being done, it was before the YouTube times. So it was all on the forums and there's some pictures. And back then people used a site called Photo Bucket. Now, if you're kind of the OG of the whole thing, you know what Photo Bucket is. But now Photo Bucket, all that memory and all those pictures are pretty much gone. So when you get on the forum and you try to search for the information on this stuff, it just says image not available. So that doesn't help us at all, which is okay. Cause someone else figured it out on their own. So we can too. So that's pretty much everything I have to do on the lower section of this intake manifold. I still need to plug this. I think what I'm gonna do is, is get an extra nut from that EGR tube, weld the top of it shut, and put it in there. This thing should be ready to set on. Let's do it. The main gripe I have with this intake is it is heavy. Hey, it's cast iron, it's not an aluminum lower. That's why I'm not gonna put it in with the upper because I really need that extra room to move it around. Did I mention it is heavy? Did I mention this thing's heavy? No, really, it's, it's pretty heavy. And if I haven't mentioned it, it's heavy. Here we go. We're gonna rotate it, slide it forward. We're almost there. Oh no. Our problem here is the oil sending unit is hitting it. I was not expecting that. Well, that was interesting. Note to self, if you're going to put a different intake manifold on these, take the oil pressure sender out. It will not go around it. What better way than to torque these with Gene's torque wrench? Got the intake in, and as you can see, I have my rotor pointing at my mark over there. And then I have my cam sensor, kind of hard to see, is pointing at the other mark. I should be getting it pretty dang close to time where we need it to be. Next step is plugging that EGR tube hole. So what I did is I grabbed a EGR nut from another tube from a parts engine at a friend's house, and I'm going to weld this shut. Now when I do something like this, I really like to make sure I can get a solid center. I just don't like to fill that entire thing up with welds. So what I did is I took some half inch stock, cut it down, we're gonna drop it right into there, and then we're gonna weld that shut. There we go, that's our final product. Got a nice little plug, we'll get it painted and stick it in the intake. And there we are, installed. Professional, kind of, not really. Since the intake's back on, I have to find something to use for injectors. I would really like to put something like the DECA 60 pound injectors in this. But as we've talked about before, even though we're trying to do everything right with this project, I also want to keep it budget oriented. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the pullet yard and see what we can find that'll work for this truck. So I'm back at the salvage yard, and obviously this is one of my favorite places to be. The possibilities are endless here. But we are here trying to find some injectors. What I kind of want to find is some 6.2 injectors. They're right around 52 pounds, I think, and that'd be perfect for what we're trying to do with Project Gene. I'm not sure if I'll find that or not. I sure hope I do. The chances are slim. I was here just a couple weeks ago pulling the wiring harness for it, and I had zero luck. And I think I am in the completely wrong area. Yeah. 
None of these look American made. Wait, they're probably more American made than others. Oh, that is cool. You've seen some better days. Got an old Corvair hiding the trees back there. Some of this stuff is so cool, you just wish you could have gotten to it before it got here, but now it's so far gone, beat up, vandalized, shot at, you name it. And, but man, can't help but use your imaginations of what could have been. walking down memory lane we gotta find some injectors found all the uh, Yukons and Escalades and all of that no 6.2s unfortunately but I have another idea so this is gonna work out a little better probably I uh, already have a couple of these it's a Pontiac GTP and they came with the supercharged 3800 v6 all types of power well they had 36 pound an hour injectors they're full height with an EV1 connector, so that's an old square one. And I think I have a couple of those at home already, so these should complete my matching set at home. So all I need to do is pull those. I think 36 will be enough for my power level. I mean, this is just a little 305 with small amount of boost. I, I can't imagine I'm gonna make that much power. We'll see. If it's not, then I'll order some bigger ones. Ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even better. Got our injectors pulled. Gotta go up. I don't know what they're gonna charge me for them. I think last time it was like two bucks a piece. Even then, that's cheap. I promise you that's better than any eBay injector you're gonna get. The lower intake manifold's on. I just bolted on the upper intake and then installed our fuel rails and the GTP injectors we pulled from the salvage yard the other day. What I'm running into right now is I need to put the coil on for the distributor. The problem is, as you see our coil right here, and it has two studs on these. And these studs do not go into the upper intake itself. It's actually on the lower intake. That's a problem because the marine intake manifold does not have those. So I'm gonna have to find a way to mount this coil over on that intake manifold. Now I've been comparing and trying to figure out what I'm gonna do and the stock Vortec bracket is just not a good option for this marine intake manifold and where my fuel rails are. So what I did find is a coil off of an LT1 Camaro that I just happened to have laying around is the exact same plug, spark plug wire type and ignition control module as what's well on the Vortec truck itself. I'm not very surprised on that because in 96, they changed the style coil ignition control module and this Vortex in 98. GM was pretty good at using similar ignition stuff on V8s. So now I'm just gonna have to find a way to mount this to that. Kind of got my general idea of what I'm gonna do here and now I just need to weld it up and then make it look somewhat nice. I really want it to look as stock as I can get it. That's gonna be tough considering it's not stock. Bracket's done. We'll let that paint dry and then bolt that on. It's, it should fit. I did a couple trial fits and everything looked good before I welded it up. Let's check out our bracket here. Oh man. Is that stock? Well, that, that might be stock. Now that, now that I can get behind. I've got a nice little bracket here, trimmed it up. It's not quite in the factory location, but it's close enough that the coil wire should work and the wiring harness should fit it without having to stretch anything or pull anything to make it look weird. The next thing we have to address is this throttle body issue. You can see, and we got a gap right here, will not seat. So that's no good. And unfortunately, I threw the marine throttle body away that may or may not have worked. I don't think the marine throttle body would have had cruise control on it, and that's really what's hitting on the fuel rail. Either way, that throttle body I threw away is going for over $200 on eBay. Dumb. What a stupid mistake. I should have checked. Could have had $200 for this project. 
We'll swallow our pride on that one, and now I just gotta find a solution over the starter body hitting the fuel rail. And do we have the solution? Maybe. I bought this on eBay. I hope that it fits better than the turbo headers. I didn't want to spend any more money than I had to, and every other plate I was looking at was over $100. This was a buyout or an old stock or something, and it was for $30, part number 11257. Boy, that is thick. We just got a little bevel, a little swirly thing. See if it fixes a problem. The answer is yes. Five million miles. The only thing that this might be an issue on is if it's too tall to be able to get my elbow on, because this is kind of what I'm I'm thinking right here. And that looks a little obnoxious. Not just that, I think I might end up hitting the hood. Ooh. <clears throat> By the time I put the throttle body on there and the spacer and then the elbow to come over to the charge pipe, I never thought I would say this. There's just not enough room under the hood. The hood clearance is a big issue. So what I've done is I've milled the top of this throttle body off. And right now I'm busy milling a quarter inch off of my spacer to make that one inch spacer a three quarters of an inch spacer. All in all, that's gonna buy me, by the time I cut down the elbow and mill down the throttle body, take a quarter inch off of that, it's gonna buy me a little over an inch clearance. I'm hoping that's enough to do what I need to do. Now I got my fly cutter in here. And I'm just kind of putting a finish cut on it. Fly cutter cuts a lot smoother than what the animal does. And that way we have a better gasket feel. I finished milling this. It's now about five eighths of an inch thick. But I was originally thinking that this was a billet part. So as I was milling it, I figured it would cut pretty good and be fine. I was wrong. It's actually a cast part. And you can see as I was going, it became porous. So when we came on this side, it was a nice finished side. But as I was milling it, we started getting little pores in it. I don't think that's enough to make any vacuum leak. All the pores are in an area that a solid gasket will be, but I wasn't liking how many were showing up, so that was a good place to stop. Getting ready to wrap up this intake conversion. I cut down this elbow, had it welded on there. I didn't do it, still learn how to TIG. We've cut the elbow down about three quarters of an inch. We milled the spacer down to about five eighths of an inch. And one thing to note with the marine intake is the OE1 has that rubber O-ring that Permatex gasket, I don't know what you actually call them, but anyways, it has that uh, rubber gasket. So I needed to have two of these paper gaskets. The wife had been begging for a laser to do crafts and cut wood, but uh, lo and behold, she can cut gaskets too. That was a really expensive gasket maker, but I have it today. Throw the gasket on there, wrong way. Spacer, gasket. Wrong way again. I'll get it right the second time. I had to get a little bit shorter bolts for the uh, spacer since I cut it down so much. But that's all right, the new ones are red. How about that? Well, I hope that we have a little bit of hood clearance now. More than enough. One of the other things I did while I was off camera is we drilled and tapped that for an intake air temperature sensor. I wanted to put it in there because it's just going to be a lot more accurate than what the charge pipe is. So we have plenty of clearance for the charge pipe and that throttle body elbow. The intake's converted on there. All I really have left to do now is build a bracket for the map sensor and extend my flex fuel wiring. But that does it for the marine intake manifold conversion. Not that bad, but not that great either. But if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And then one of the reasons why everyone doesn't do it is for one, LSs are a lot cheaper. Still not putting a 5.3 in it. Don't say it. And then number two is these marine intake manifolds. You can buy two or three 5.3s for what they cost. I just got lucky on the auction site. Well, I'm gonna wrap this up, pick up a little bit so I can hit it pretty hard this weekend. I'm gonna try to tidy up the rest of it and hopefully get that first startup done so I can get that video to you guys in two weeks. Thanks for watching. If you really like this project, please comment, like, and subscribe. It costs you nothing and it helps me out tremendously. I'll see you in the next video.